Hello and welcome to Take Time. I am your host, Patrick Marlette, and let's talk about the Crafter Blue Curved and Rubber Strap for Turtle Series Strap. So not too long ago, Crafter Blue created a vulcanized rubber strap that is fitted to the Turtle Series case. That is the SRP Turtle Series watch from Seiko. And if you don't know, Crafter Blue has been in the market of making custom fitted straps for some time now, and this is by no means their first fitted strap for a Seiko product. They've done one for the Sumo and the SKX. Um, of course, I'll leave a link in the description to their website so you can check them out if you haven't heard of them yet. But in front of me today, I am holding the black version of the Crafter Blue uh, curved N rubber strap for Turtle Series strap in front of me. And of course, I have it fitted to my Seiko SRP775J because, you know, I had to get the Japanese one. And um, I've got a lot to say about this strap. But as you guys know, I like to start with the bad and then move on to the good before giving my final opinions on a product. So why don't we start there? Now, before we dive into the review here, I wanna get some of the technical specifications out of the way. The strap is of course made out of vulcanized rubber. And what does that mean for you? Uh, basically, it meets the ROHS standard. So it's non-toxic, non-allergenic, and non-marking. So it should be rather comfortable and also safe for most skin types. You have a stainless steel keeper here, 316L stainless steel, 316L stainless steel buckle and tongue. And those are pretty much the basics. The strap length in totality is about 220 millimeters. That is the length here, as well as the end that has the buckle. The lug width is of course 22 millimeters. And as these are fitted for the Turtle Series Diver, you aren't gonna find these in different lug widths. Uh, the thickness of the lug is 7.5 millimeters. And that is the vulcanized rubber that touches, obviously, the lug. The thickness of the ends of the strap, however, are 3.5 millimeters. And they state that this is a good universal size for most wrists. They don't specify uh, who this should wear with, on, rather, uh, like what you know wrist sizes this is precisely for. But um, this is likely good for someone with a six inch wrist all the way up to, gosh, 8.5, maybe nine inches. Now, there's a lot of perforations here. They run the entire length of this long end of the strap. So I, I think if you have a bigger wrist, you won't find any trouble fitting this there. And also if you have a shorter wrist, well, I think you've got yourself covered with this guy as well. One final specification to get out of the way, both the buckle and keeper are 20 millimeters in width and the strap itself tapers down to 20 millimeters. So if you wanted to switch the buckle out for one that's more appropriate for your Seiko, you definitely could. However, note that the space where this tongue resides is quite wide. So you're gonna have, you know, if the tongue is smaller in width, which it likely will be, it's gonna dangle around in there. So I would suggest keeping the original buckle. And aside from the black coloration, if you wanted to get a different color to match your watch, there are five in total. So you have black, obviously, navy blue, yellow, orange, and brown. Now, contrary to what some of you imagine, I do have to pay for um, many of my watches and of course, many of the accessories I have in here on the show. And this is actually a strap I purchased. They were kind enough to offer a few, but I wound up purchasing it anyways to see what the customer experience might be for you guys. And by the way, this is not an affordable strap. I know uh, I've heard complaints about some of the prices I've mentioned on other items. This strap runs about $65 and it's all placed into the strap, by the way. Uh, like the shipping material for this item was not, was not amazing. I got this a couple months ago. It, it came in like a bubble mailer with a card. You got spring bars. We're gonna talk about the spring bars in a second. You got spring bars to go with the strap and just this little bag you know, that experience as a whole wasn't really cool. I know a lot of you don't care, I do care. So for the people like me, uh, that note is for you. Don't expect anything really grand. They're not really gonna wow you with presentation. But the first bad note I really wanna mention is with the customer service, because when I put my order in, I didn't receive word about its shipment until I emailed them which was a week later. I try to give groups the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they shipped it and just didn't, you know, send me a confirmation email, receipt with the tracking, whatever. But when I emailed them, it turns out that they just completely forgot about the shipment and it was never sent. However, I have to say, Steve did a good job of responding promptly to me and making sure that item was shipped in a good manner. But that's not great customer service, guys. If, if you have to wait a week before your item ships, that's, that's not good, especially when you're spending this much on an item. You know, I've gotten things from overseas that arrived in, in two days. You know, that, that's impressive customer service. 
But the fact that I had to reach out to get my item was a little bit annoying, especially when you spend this much for an item. Like we've complained about prices on the channel before. Um, 65 is a lot to spend on an accessory for a watch that's about $300. You, know, you can get these for a lot less now. Um, mm, I, I wish they had, they had been a little bit more prompt with their service. The next bad note I want to mention is actually about the spring bars that were provided with this strap. And it's a little annoying, but I took the strap off of the watch so you can see that the diameter of these holes is much smaller than your standard uh, Seiko spring bar. So you can't use the original spring bars on your watch to hoist this strap up. Um, and that isn't inherently a problem, but if you are a Seiko collector or if you've bought a bunch of their divers, you likely have a lot of their spring bars lying around and uh, you can't use them. You know, if, if one of these spring bars that were provided fail, you're not gonna be able to use your old spring bars because the strap is not only fitted for your watch, um, it's fitted to use a particular spring bar and you need a smaller diameter spring bar, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. But the issue here being these thinner spring bars aren't gonna be as durable down the road. They're not gonna hold up as well as the fatties that Seiko makes. And there's a reason Seiko uses such thick spring bars. Mind you, the diameters of the ends that meet your lug holes are the right size. You know, these don't wobble around when in place, but they're not gonna last as long or they're not gonna be as resilient with the strap. And perhaps the way it's fitted with those thick curved ends, uh, it will maintain its integrity. But further on down the road, I mean, I've gotten vintage Seiko divers that still have their original fat spring bars that are perfectly intact. And, uh, you know, it's a matter of hoisting up a heavy watch on a strap. Um, you you kind of want the best option available, and this is the best option for Seiko's heavy divers. Uh, this I don't have too much faith in, but only time will tell if this holds up. And if it doesn't, well, then I'm going to have to source out thinner spring bars with heads that fit my lugs instead of just using, you know, one of the hundreds of fat spring bars I have lying around. So that's a little pesky. Um, again, this is a future, you know, issue. It's not it's not a now complaint, really. You know, these spring bars do work, but I'm a little annoyed that they weren't able to work in the original spring bars and just give you another set of fatty spring bars to use with these instead, because, you know, that's, that's what we have. The final bad note I want to mention about this product is actually the keeper that's on it. It's marked professional. That's cool, I guess. Um, however, it doesn't do a professional job of holding the strap in place. Metal keepers and vulcanized rubber never work well together. Not in my experience. I've had a bunch of straps with metal keepers and the rubber strap always falls out of place. The way this just glides around the rubber strap, uh, when it's on my wrist and I'm having an active day or even a relatively inactive day of just work or just lounging, I find that it slides uh, off the strap far too often. I always find this end of the strap dangling out of the other end and my keeper just floating about it. It does not do a great job of holding your strap down. So, you know, if that bothers you, if that's gonna nag you like it does me, well then maybe this isn't the best option for you because it's, it's gonna happen naturally. That's just, you know, in the nature of the strap. And I'm sure many of you are gonna have different experiences than me, but I've had this strap for about, gosh, since October, early October. And uh, it's done that pretty much every single time I've put it on my wrist, the strap has just fallen out of that keeper. Um, if the keeper isn't doing its job, then I just, I'm just wearing a, a watch strap that's gonna have the, you know, a huge piece of strap hanging out the end every time I wear it. And that, that does get annoying, let me tell you. All of those sour notes out of the way, I actually do have some good things to say about this strap, no worries. Um, if you like the rest of their lineup of, you know, vulcanized rubber straps, then you'll likely like this one. They're one of the only groups that does like a nice fitted rubber strap for your Seiko dive watch. So, you know, you don't have much by way of competition, but what they do create is relatively good. Um, this is my first experience with the brand. And I have to say, I, I enjoy the feel of this strap on the wrist. Now, as some of you know, Seiko's upgraded the rubber strap that's featured on a lot of their dive watches now. It's no longer the stiff, you know, wavy rubber strap that was featured on the SKX. They now have a, I don't know if it's natural rubber, but it feels and wears more like natural rubber on the uh, SRP series Seiko Turtles. You, you have 
a really great option for a stock rubber strap from Seiko, right from the get-go. And that metal keeper on there, in my experience, has done a better job than this one. I can't explain why. I, perhaps it's just the way it fits on my wrist, but I don't remember that one falling off as often as this one does, but that one certainly did fall off as well. So, you know, is this a compelling offering at $65? Well, why don't we talk about some of the good points to square that away? So when on the wrist, um, this is an awesome look for your SRP Turtle, especially if you have the gilt dial one here. I love the mixture of two tones with this really great well-fitted black rubber strap. And I have to say, it wears extremely, extremely well. It's very comfortable. You know, the way that these are curved and arch off of the case back following the natural lines of the Turtle cushion case just makes it an incredible experience on the wrist. Like the the watch head fits so well on your wrist that you you kind of it kind of gets lost on there. It's just a very very comfortable wearing experience. The rubber provided with these straps is extremely supple and extremely extremely comfortable on the wrist. I have to say that this is one of the better vulcanized rubber straps I have received or purchased um, from any group. Um, on the back here, you'll see that it's signed Crafter Blue on the end of the buckle, and of course, it's also signed on the strap itself. It's odd knowing that this strap is a fitted strap specifically for the SRP Turtle, but they have cutouts provided on the back of the case should you want to remove your spring bars the old-fashioned way with a spring bar tool. But if not, you know as a Turtle owner that it does have a holes case, so you can just push them out that way. And that's honestly the preferred method. That's, that's what I do. This way, you know, there's no way of risking scratching the back of the case. But I guess it's cool that they did provide that. I'll mention that as a good note as well. The next great feature about this strap is the number of perforations, again, on the longer length of the strap. And this is one of the nicest, finest, tightest spacings I've seen on any strap. Um, it becomes extremely wearable for any wrist. And, you know, my wrist expand and, you know, retract uh, just depending on any activities I'm doing, whether it's hot or cold out. And it's very easy to adjust the strap on the fly to be just that much more wearable. And, you know, the degrees of distance between each one of these perforations is just great for that. So this is a joy to wear in regards uh, to sizing and wearability. And there's also some nice subtle detailing if you like your rubber strap to be a little bit more three-dimensional. They've actually uh, curved out lines uh, precisely where the center link would be on the bracelet option for this watch, but they've carved out these lines and have a raised edge where a center link would be. So it just adds a little bit more life to your strap and you can see how it catches light. It adds a little bit of shading to the ends and it's just more eye-pleasing than you know a thick piece of rubber that was completely flush and flat against the watch running down. I, I do like that they went with an aesthetic style here and it does spice up this strap option a little bit for you. Now, as I am sure you guys are wondering what this looks like on the wrist, I'm gonna provide that wrist shot for you now. So here's how the Crafter Blue is gonna look like for all of your admirers and when you're going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. So what I love about this strap on the wrist is how good it looks in conjunction with your Seiko watch. And you can see that it's just perfectly fitted to the case and the lines as it wears on your wrist sort of finish out the ovaline form of the cushion style case provided by the Seiko Turtle. Another fine detail I wanna highlight as it's on the wrist is the slightly beveled edge as it tapers towards the ends of the strap. And these bevels start right where the lugs meet the strap. So that cutout only forms when it, um, you know, pushes itself off the body and off the lug ends of the case. So it actually, again, provides another three-dimensional aspect to the strap. The lug ends themselves fit extremely well against the case. There's no wiggle or wobble. Um, it is indeed fitted quite well to the case. I was going to say perfectly, but I'm reluctant to say that. It is fitted very well to the side of the case. So, you know, I've not had the issue with there being any gap between the strap and the case. Uh, it does indeed fit as it should. And just showing it to you guys in my B cam, you can see that this keeper is already trying to work itself off of the strap. Ugh, it's, it's, it's such a pet peeve of mine. I hate when keepers don't do their job, but 
I find myself doing this action throughout the day. I just pushing it down because I know even like this, it's, it's going to start working its way off. Um, but again, you know, that minor note aside, I think it's very comfortable on the wrist. The keeper doesn't brush against the wrist in any uncomfortable manner. The strap wears extremely, extremely well. You know, that's sort of what you're buying into with this. Fitted straps are always going to have a higher level of comfort than something that's just hanging on the ends of a spring bar because that way they can accentuate the lines of the case if the design is done right and have it hug your wrist and that's just what this one does. So far as my final thoughts are concerned about this strap, do I think it's worth your $65? Is it worth the $65 I spent on it? Uh, yes, as an option, as a rubber option to your Seiko SRP Series Turtle, I think it's a great alternative. If you want what would be the best fitting rubber strap for your wrist, a, a nice vulcanized rubber strap that's probably gonna last you a lifetime, this is a great alternative to the stock rubber strap. But then again, you know, mine, mine came with a bracelet, but if you received a model with the Seiko rubber strap, I honestly think they're doing such a good job with that new rubber strap that getting another rubber strap might be a little redundant. So what I will say is if you wanted to get this in an alternative color, and mind you, there are a ton of Seiko SRP Turtle variations with different color schemes, and that's why they, they came out with so many different color options for this strap. I would say that the Crafter Blue would be best for an alternative color as opposed to the black. If you had the black stock rubber strap, man, stick with that, because that thing is that thing is really good. And if you don't own it, if you buy the bracelet model, maybe just pick up that one as well. If you wanted to get a colored variation of this strap to match your watch a little bit better, a lot a bit better, honestly, this is the best way to go. If you want something that's gonna wear just a little bit better than the stock strap, I think this definitely wears better than that. Not in regards to the keeper, but overall fit and finish and obviously quality, I think this strap does a good job. And as I was asked just recently to get some images provided of what my, you know, gilt dial turtle looks like with this strap on, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys the overall look of this strap on the watch head. And uh, while I'm down here, I might as well highlight just how curved it is off the head. Now, mind you, this is a very, you know, supple, pliant strap. It's going to bend and fit any dimension, but they have it arced off of the watch head very, very prominently. You know, it's not it's not going to fit into a roll bag very easily, but if you do have a hard shell case, you know, you can wrap this in there. You know, so for travel, that is another minor complaint, but not one really worth noting. You know, when I travel with my watches, they don't typically go in a roll bag. I've, I usually have a hard shell case for a single watch and I'll be wearing the other. Um, I've traveled with this watch and uh, you know it's just been on my wrist with this strap on but yeah you you can't put this in a you know traditional roll bag but that's okay you know that's always a problem with these fitted straps so it, it seems a little superfluous mentioning it here and anyway guys those are just my opinions on the strap of course you know they are not the end all be all and if you're looking at this video to get a good idea of whether you should buy the strap you should probably look over the comments because i'm going to ask you guys now what do you think of crafter blue have you purchased from them before? Have you purchased this Seiko SRP Turtle Series strap from them? And what are your thoughts on it? I'd love to hear your opinions. You know, I knew I was on the fence when purchasing this because I, I do actually have the rubber option and I find that to be perfect for the watch. I think it looks really good with it and it also wears very well. Um, again, this weighing just a little bit better. Is it worth it? That That is a question that you're gonna have to answer, honestly. So, you know, let me know your guys' thoughts as well. At any rate, guys, if you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little something like this. If you have friends, forums, or groups that are interested in watch content, especially if they're interested in Crafter Blue products, maybe share this video with them to help them better assess whether they should get the watch strap or not. And this is also gonna translate for most of their other product line because you know the ones for the Suma and the SKX are built in much the same way, same sort of hardware, same vulcanized rubber. Uh, so my complaints and uh, praises are going to reflect on that as well. And if you are a long time viewer of the show or new to it with this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button to make our family just a little bit bigger. We do vlogs, interviews, reviews, and of course discussions here. So if that's your thing, then this is a good channel for you. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette and thank you for the time.